Okay. So thank you, Shashi, for, uh, for joining me for this interview with the Reimagining Education Harvesting Team. Um, first question for you, what possible stuck situation from your work and life or life brought you to this journey of reimagining and prototyping? Uh, thanks, Andrea, for having me. Um, so I used to work in the education system on systemic change. And I realized that bringing about systemic change in a complex system was really, really difficult. And from there, I moved to start focusing on work on well-being uh, because I started realizing that as working in higher education, there are many uh, youth, and I was also aware of this for children, uh, as you know, struggling a lot in terms of uh, their own sort of socio-emotional well-being. So... Uh, while working on that across a period of four years, all that I was able to reach was about 400 people and it seemed to be so minuscule. And so the, that gave me a sense of stuckness. It was not going to go very far. And uh, the thought in my head was, what we really need is a movement for well-being. And so we said, how do we start looking at a movement for well-being where many can contribute and help many others? And one of the first stages in that is what we cre created called the Wellbeing Lab. So the Wellbeing Lab was an idea and a journey of um, uh, a group of people who worked with youth and children, who are interested and who saw themselves as well-being professionals and who are interested in the well-being of youth and children. And the question was, how can we come together and take a look at uh, how can we work towards improving the well-being of youth and children? So that's the situation that sort of brought us into this uh, uh, lab and this journey. It was a nine-month long journey, uh, which will be ending uh, day after tomorrow. Um, so that's what brought us into this space. Thank you. Uh, your words remind me of another interview I heard recently with another speaker and she mentioned um, that in order to change the system you have to step outside the system so your experience reminded me of that yes, uh, what is a you. what is a threshold situation that you are facing right now in your work and life i have come from a particular um, school of thinking uh, where the idea was to work programmatically where you start by saying here's the outcome you want to create and then you sort of plan all the outcomes intermediate outcomes and immediate outcomes that are required and you sort of put together a program to be able to execute that and um, that is something that I felt that I needed to let go of uh, because in the complexity of what we were looking at, I, I just didn't see that working. So uh, we started realizing that movements don't work that way. And we have to find other ways of uh, uh, sort of uh, trying to bring about uh, change. A and that's why uh, we constructed things as this well-being lab where uh, people come together with a shared intention, but not goals. Uh, with an intent to create deep relationships, authentic connections with one another and to explore the field and begin to get a sense of what is the current reality when it comes to the well-being of youth and children. And here, basically, we were trying to model, uh, by and large, what happened to uh, children in school as well as youth to some degree. And, and recognize the sort of forces that were keeping them locked in that position and where uh, in the lived reality of a child, the idea of well-being did not even feature in the many things that the, um, the system did uh, to work with them. It, it was so much about academics, 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 and, and, and really very little to do with their own well-being and their, their state of mind. And the system put huge amounts of pressure on them. Uh, 
and in a well being landscape it was almost like they were outside of the landscape and everybody else was determining what ought to happen to them so that's the situation uh, that we were facing on a, on a sort of larger trajectory of what was going on and um, as a result of that we sort of came to the conclusion that um if the child has to become at the center and if the youth have to become at the center and their well being needs to come into the center then certain things need to start shifting and we need to start letting go of some of the earlier uh, ways of being and doing and sort of um, embrace what starts to emerge so that's the kind of uh, uh, place that we are right now uh as we see this uh, situation of uh, the well being of youth and children so as i hear um your answer and also hearing the other uh, teachers answers is like making space for well being to be possible making space for young mm. adults to experience mm. awareness or presence or flow yes yes that's right thank you uh what is an emerging right now in your life and work that future uh, calling regarding well-being and teaching with well-being so i think uh, what's been emerging for us collectively through the well-being lab as we've been looking at this thing and seeing what's the system that we would like to see in place um we've tried to model what the in our own heads get a sense of what the system ought to be and we sort of try to work out some of the prototypes that we might want to engage in uh, that call to us that make us uh, that excite us and at the same time work on the systemic issues and uh, many of the people who are part of the wellbeing lab are coming from uh, non governmental organizations and as they work uh with children and youth the situation that they face is pretty complex uh, because what they see on the ground is distressing on one hand uh, on the other hand uh, institutional structures that one turns to and hopes will be supportive they find it very difficult to get support from those kind of institutions because for their own reasons uh, no one's finding fault with them but where they are at the moment they too stuck to be able to do do things and the funding landscape for uh, non governmental organizations is also extremely difficult so within the space of difficulty as people are trying to work on the well being of youth and children uh, one of the first things uh, that arose in us is the need for us to take care of our own well being um we need to be and do the kind of people who epitomize well-being who are in a state of not being distressed who are in a space of being able to come from positive emotions and the complexity is that while well, each one of us who's doing this work uh, is also working in another organization so the question that arose in front of us was uh how can we work on improving the organizational well-being of the organizations that we work with because if we can improve the organization well-being if we can imagine an organization uh, coming from a place of not distress and struggle but a lot more calm centeredness a place of coming from a space of love and compassion uh our assumption is our ability to do work out there will be significantly better when we work with youth and children so the question was we are all human we all make mistakes we are nowhere at the place where we can say all of us are going to come with love and compassion and be in this calm centered space so if we need to do that then for each one of us the organizations that we work with we need to see how can the culture of that organization shift and to make that shift how do we ourselves shift internally what shifts can take place in us so that we show up in a place that epitomizes these things of being in the present moment of being calm and centered of showing up to see how can we be of service 
uh, to help others in our group. Not so much to go and say, here's what you need to do to fix your practice, but to become a part of uh, leading that change inside out. So uh, one of the prototypes uh, we came up with, there are uh, a number of prototypes we came up with, but one of the prototypes we came up with was this prototype on organizational well-being. And the idea was we create a hub and spoke model. So the hub is the eight of us who are in this particular prototype um, where we create ways of supporting one another. And the spoke is each one of us goes out to our organizations and tries to understand our own leadership challenge in terms of bringing about well-being practices in, those, in our own organizations. Now, all of these eight organizations are very different from each other in different stages of life, with different complexities and so on. So the question was, if each of us went out there and did this work, is there a way we can come back to each other and uh, go through a process? And we're in the process of creating what that process ought to be. But our assumption is that in a sense, we're each bringing back a case, a little bit like a case clinic. And we're basically saying, this is the issue that I'm grappling with, where while I'm trying to work on improving well-being practices in my organization, this is my own struggles as a human being and as a person. So it's located in us. How can we, how can I do better in this whole thing? And uh, the idea is, Side by side with this, we create basically a repository of um, uh, tools and resources that we could use. So if we build this repository of tools, when somebody presents a case, we take a look at the tools and repos uh, we have in our repository and see what tools will help us address this problem. We may not have all the tools, but we begin to see what is it that might be able to help us address this problem. And in the process of going through that, we hope to refine our own process of carrying out what I would call case clinics or discussions, which are specific to an organization uh, with the help of tools and other support systems. So once we, once we fine tune this process, once we get better at this process, we'll never fine tune it completely. We are now in a situation to start inviting other organizations who are not part of our initial group to come and participate in this. One of the things we've realized is that many organizations suffer with this issue of organizational well-being. What, do, what does an organization need to do in order to be a container uh, which is very supportive of the well-being journey of the individuals in that organization? Uh, so we hope to be on this path of discovery. We hope to be on this path of putting together processes which are helpful, resources which are helpful. And then we hope to reach out to many other uh, non-governmental organizations who are interested in this issue of organizational well-being uh, to come and work with us. And we are basically looking at organizations working for the well-being of youth and children. So that's really where we are. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a rather long answer, but that's where we are in terms of... Uh, no, thank you very much for, for actually uh, taking us on your process of prototyping and crystallization. Um, actually, what uh, resonated with me is that the success of an intervention depends on the place from which we come in that intervention. Yes, absolutely. So I think uh, that, that statement from Bill O'Brien was the thing that got us to say, let's not take a problem-solving approach and let's not say let's fix problems out there. What do we do internally? So very much what you said, Andrea, that's the uh, center of where we want to be. Of course, we're still trying it. We don't know what will emerge. And, but we're very excited and looking forward to seeing what emerges. And uh, last but not least, allowing collective wisdom uh, to guide us. What are one, two elements for reimagining in your work and life? Um, so the metaphor that arises in me um, is the metaphor of um, the flight of starlings. You know, you see these thousands of birds flying and doing these beautiful things out there. And uh, it sort of comes from the space of uh, complex adaptive systems where uh, every... Um, individual bird has its autonomy 
to do whatever it chooses as long as follows two other simple rules uh, or three other rules uh, as the case might be and so the so what's beginning to emerge for us collectively is the recognition that uh, there is no one expert in any of this we all have our wisdom and if we can go through this process uh, of showing up with autonomy uh, go through this process of being authentic in our intention of wanting to improve uh, our own well-being and the well-being of people in our organization so that they can uh, in turn you know help with the well-being of youth and children uh, our assumption is that this is something that can actually uh, grow because it's a process for us so far the process has been very much an opt in opt out process uh, there is no there are no social contracts that we need to do this so everyone who comes and joins something like this comes observes it chooses to stay or chooses to go but the people who stay are coming with a huge amount of energy and i think um, it's the energy of many coming together each person doing what they feel called upon to do but being part of this fabric of having a a, a shared intention to see the well-being of youth and children flourish i think that's in my imagination is what is going to help this uh, grow uh, from in this particular prototype we are just eight of us but help this grow to become something much larger because we assume that if these prototypes if the, the processes we follow have been refined reasonably and if these resources have been put together well that anybody who's a part of this can actually take it out and multiply it from there and we're all glad to help people doing that from a process point of view so that's how we are seeing the whole thing uh, unfolding uh, in our heads at the moment thank you very much shashi for this talk and for this my uh, pleasure and your my pleasure thank you